Hello and welcome to Race and Ethnicity Week 10. This week we're going to be studying the association between education and race. Remember that historically in America, the only people that really had a great access to especially higher levels of education were white males. Then over time, minorities such as women, um, African American, Jewish people, they gained access into the education system. The great thing about getting access into the education system is education is the best way to get out of poverty. Again, if you want to look at social class location and where you're located compared to other people, it begins often with education, which gets you a job, which then gets you wealth, which then gets you some control and power over your life, and perhaps others, depending on how much power you have and where you're located in society. But again, the initial access into education is imperative. And when you look at and you control for race and you look at it in terms of education, I pulled up this interesting U.S. Census Bureau statistic. It shows you that non-Hispanic whites get college degrees at a rate of 40 percent compared to only 26 percent for African-Americans, for example. And then you will see that Asians have higher rates of education, which is why Asian males tend to make more money than white males in general. However, there are far more white males than Asian males. Therefore, again, whites still have the majority shareholder when it comes to the amount of money that is available at any given time in a society. Okay, so what you're gonna see is, again, whites are getting more access to education than other minority groups, such as Hispanics and African-Americans, which is one reason you can argue that whites make more money because they're getting better access to better jobs, which is enabling, enabling them to <clears throat> rise up the social class ladder. And therefore, if they whites are higher up the social class ladder than non-whites, they arguably have more life chances, more power over their lives, more access to material goods and services, homes, cars, health care, food, vacations, etc. So again, it all begins with education. And historically, you know, again, education was segregated. Only white males were really allowed to get a college degree, become doctors and lawyers and politicians. So you've had these several waves of the feminist movement, the first, second, and third, first being voting, second being women's rights um, to become doctors and lawyers in the 1960s. And then the third wave of feminism now, which is the demanding for equity in all areas, including pay rates, because again, women only make 80 cents to every dollar a man makes. Uh, so again, the biggest barrier to breakthrough was education. And now you're seeing this huge flip where women are getting more college degrees than men. However, whites are still getting more college degrees than non-whites, except for the Asian population there, okay? And again, so very interesting stuff going on here. So this week, that's what you guys are going to be talking about. Just all these really cool concepts. And you can really begin of looking at the history of race, look at the history of education and segregation, look at what happens when the Supreme Court demanded that we integrate the schools. Then you have this white flight where white people leave the cities and go out to the suburbs. The cities become full of lower class minorities. A lot of people were stuck in poverty. The school systems went down in the cities. All the nice school systems ended up in the suburbs. So then the suburbs is where all the upper middle class people went, where the good schools are. The children that live in the nice suburbs, the nice areas, got access to better schools, which made them be able to test better for the ACT and the ACT. Again, it all combines. So you can see how segregation in the education system play out. Just look at urbanization, follow the white flight of the 1960s. You know, it just comes in so many forms. Uh, so I love a class, if you ever get a chance to take it, called like the Sociology of Education. And it just studies all this, how the education filter system filters you into upper class, lower class, into white collar, blue collar. And your race often dictates what social class you get dictated into or you get uh, molded into, for example, by the education system. Because minority schools don't necessarily have the same quality of education as um, schools where, you know, the parents of, you know, have high socioeconomic status, for example, because the school districts that are in the high tax districts can pay for better schools, better quality, better, higher standards. And again, then you start to get into culture in the education system. How is culture influencing your education? For example, look at the value systems of lower class culture versus upper class culture. Look at the value of education between the social classes. And then again, you have to remember that minorities were always stuck in the lower classes. And so again, what's the best way to keep a minority in the lower class? Don't let them get an education. 
you had, this is how you level the playing field. Again, allow everybody to get an education and give everybody access to getting a mortgage to their house and you'll see some major social change, okay? So this is just an amazing chapter. I hope you guys like it. Please read chapter seven uh, and then look over the PowerPoint for chapter seven also. Again, you're gonna be just looking at how education policies in the 20th century force racial groups to assimilate. Um, and also how culture and systematic institutionalization or institution uh, exist in the education system. You're going to be looking at ways that whiteness pervades the curriculum. And again, you got to think of whiteness as more like higher level social class status because, you know, race and social class go hand in hand. To whiteness, what does that actually mean? You know, are you talking about poor whites? Are you talking about middle class whites? What exactly does that mean? Remember, white is a pan ethnicity, just a bunch of people grouped together under some race called white. Okay. Uh, so again, look at the education gap between different races, as I just showed you with the U.S. Census Bureau. And then you guys are going to take the quiz on chapter seven, and then you're going to do this great assignment called racism in schools. So you're going to open up this Gamerin article, and he's going to be talking about his predictions. You know, is there going to be a disparity between whites and blacks? I mean, you can see that we're both increasing by six, seven percent by all the races, but you know, is, are you going to see a bigger disparity? So he's looking at that. Um, then you guys are going to look at um, the Nagira article. Um, which is racial inequality in education. Again, their perspectives for the future. Then you guys are gonna need to watch this video. And for this, again, you're gonna need your library card. I have my student ID. If you don't have it, call IT, they'll work it out for you. Obviously I do that for the last assignment. And then you guys will drop box your assignment in here. And it basically says, watch this videos, read these articles, then write an essay talking about inequality in education. Again, look at white flight, look at, you know, disparities of where the good schools are compared to the, where the bad schools are and do it by neighborhood, for example. You know, there's so many awesome areas to go here. Uh, you do need to use these three sources, um, but you can also use any additional information from the library or just some cool article you might've read. And then you wanna write a 600 word paper. So you guys, I hope you enjoy the week. And uh, again, hopefully this blows your mind like it does mine. When I start studying the sociology of education, I am just overwhelmed, especially when you look at it from the perspective of conflict theory and inequality in the filtering process. You can look at it from a functionalist theory as like, what's the function of the education system? Is the purpose of the education system to educate people or is it to, or is it to filter people into groups? Into what group you get filtered in, is that influenced by your race? Okay, so again, guys, it's big picture stuff. And then symbolic interactionism is, we're the ones who create the education system. We're the one who creates systematic racism. You know, we can deconstruct that and fix it and make it better anytime we want. All right, cool. Have a great day.